Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Zuyo Maru Monster. This story is one that comes to us from 1977, and rather than an alive animal sighting, this one is actually this carcass that was found that we still aren't quite sure what it belongs to. The Zoyumaru carcass was one that was found by Japanese fishermen near New Zealand. Because it was so unique, it was taken to be analyzed, and while many have speculated that it was a basking shark, that has never been confirmed or proven. Considering the fact that it was definitely shark-like, but just not quite clear as to what exactly it was, is definitely interesting. In our number 9 spot today, we have the sea creature. Back in both 1817 as well as 1819, there was a sea creature that visited the coast of Massachusetts and it was seen by hundreds of people, but no one has been able to identify what it could have been for sure. The creature was said to be around 3 feet in diameter and around 50 feet long, and it is said that it moved similarly to how a whale or a dolphin might. The first sighting of this creature was when some fishermen spotted it, but the real panic began as the creature started to show itself closer to shore. To this day, some people swear that this was some sort of real sea monster, and others believe it was just a case of mass hysteria. What do you think? In our number 8 spot today, we have the prehistoric monster. Back in 1959, a fisherman named Tex Geds and his friend James Gavin were boating somewhere just off of the coast of Scotland. It is said that during their time out to sea, they encountered a sea monster that neither of them had seen before. They described its head as being sort of turtle shaped and that it was a quote, hellish monster of prehistoric times, and said that it was breathing heavily through a quote, large red gash of a mouth. Okay, not exactly a kind description, but definitely a bit of a terrifying. One. I think it's important to bring up that we don't actually know what megalodons looked like. We have a sort of idea, but at the end of the day, we only have fossils, jaws, and spines, and that doesn't leave us that much to work with. While it isn't quite clear what these two men saw for sure, and it's likely that we'll never know, whatever it was definitely wasn't just your average sea creature. In our number 7 spot today, we have Dr. Gru. When we think of the tales of sea monsters and myths, we often think of the many serpent-like creatures that just may be lurking underneath the water. This is definitely a common theme, and in the 17th century there was a botanist who came up with a sort of explanation for these sea serpent sightings. It's important to note that this botanist was a very legitimate scientist who really worked to change basically everything we knew about plant anatomy, so when he came forth with this evidence and explanation, it rightfully caught people's attention. Basically, he had this specimen, which was a sample of skin that he said was from some sort of seal, but that it had a neck just as long as the rest of its body. Of course, this would explain a whole bunch of sea monster sightings, but in the end, the skin sample ended up completely disappearing, making any confirmation of the story or the animal's existence completely impossible. I know a megalodon isn't necessarily supposed to look like a seal with a long neck, but who's to say for sure that it doesn't? In our number 6 spot today, we have the shipwreck. Back in 1909, the French steamer La Seine was out to sea when it collided with the British India steamer, the Onda. A shipwreck is never good, but this one was particularly particularly bad as, in heavy fog, the French ship sank in just two minutes. This of course left people stranded in the water, and I mean, you can probably see where this is going. In the aftermath of this wreck while waiting for the rescue, there were 101 people who lost their lives from shark attacks. That's a lot of people. That is either a lot of sharks, or a very few large ones. I mean, none of us were there, so it's hard to say for sure, but whatever really happened here, it's an absolutely horrifying tragedy. In our number 5 spot today, we have the kayak encounter. Ida Parker and Kristen Orr were kayaking off of the coast of Plymouth in 2014 when they encountered a shark. This is truly a nightmare scenario, and it must have been absolutely terrifying. The pair, however, had actually set off with the intention of seeing a great white shark, and while it's likely that this is exactly what they encountered, they definitely did not expect what happened next. The two had heard of rumblings of a shark in the area that had swallowed a seal in one gulp, and this is what sparked their desire to head out on this journey. While out there, however, the shark began to attack their kayaks. In the end, both of them made it out alive, and when their kayaks were recovered, one was found with a huge bite mark in it. In our number 4 spot today, we have the oldest shark attack. Considering the fact that the megalodon is said to have been extinct somewhere over 2 million years ago, even evidence that seems ancient to us is a lot more recent than what our current understanding of their timeline here on Earth would suggest. 
past. That is exactly why the discovery of what is speculated to be the world's oldest evidence of a shark attack is very interesting. This discovery came by way of a 3,000 year old human skeleton that is marked with different gashes and puncture wounds. It is said that because of the volume of wounds, it makes it slightly easier to tell the story of what happened. This is because while researchers first believed that perhaps the wounds were caused by metal weapons, this could not explain why there were so many in certain parts of the body. Another telltale sign is how this skeleton was discovered in Japan, which at the time of this person's life, there weren't really any metal weapons at that point in history in Japan, which ruled out this theory entirely. They were also able to rule out other terrestrial carnivores, and that's when they turned to marine life to look for some more answers. Because of the time it's been, we obviously don't know what creature was involved in this attack for sure, but with the mass amount of wounds found on the skeleton, it was likely to be something large and terrifying. In our number three spot today, we have snorkeling. Robert Pamperin and a friend, Gerald Lair, were snorkeling off of La Jolla Cave in California in 1959 when Robert was attacked by a shark. It is said to have all happened quite quickly, and Gerald was alerted to the distress when he heard Robert scream. Gerald turned and saw Robert unusually high in the water, and his mask was missing. At this point, Gerald dove under, and this is when he realized exactly what was going on. There was a shark that had Robert in its mouth up to his waist. Unfortunately, there was not much Gerald could do to stand up to this absolutely massive shark that he described as larger than your average great white. Robert sadly did not survive the event, and by the time rescuers arrived, they were only able to locate one of his fins. In our number two spot today, we have the Jersey Shore. Back in 1916, during the summer season, there were five different shark attacks that occurred over the span of 10 days that ended up in the deaths of four people. This wasn't something that had been seen before in the area, which of course left people speculating as to why. There was a heat wave in the area during the time which likely led to more people being out, enjoying summertime sort of activities, and maybe this attracted the shark, but in the end, no one knows for sure, because no one even knows what kind of shark is responsible for the attacks in the first place. Luckily, this didn't go on to become a continuous trend, and whatever shark this was went on its merry way, or perhaps found another food source, or whatever, but this series of attacks definitely kept the public on edge for the weeks and months surrounding. In our number one spot today, we have the USS Indianapolis. This is a story that has been considered the worst shark attack in history, which is definitely a horrific thing to think about. In 1945, the USS Indianapolis was an unescorted US warship that was sailing in the Pacific when it was struck by a Japanese torpedo. This had no problem tearing the ship in two, which meant that 900 sailors were now floating in the ocean, waiting for rescue. Over the next five days, nearly 600 men lost their lives due to shark attacks. I said this about the other one that was similar to this, and I'll say it again. That's either a group of sharks, or a very few large, very hungry ones. From the survivors' accounts of what happened over the course of those days, it seemed like an absolutely nightmare situation. This is exactly why this has gone on to be called one of the worst shark attacks in history. Starting us off with number 10 is the Helicoprion, also known as as the spiral mouthed killer, terrorizing the seas nearly 300 million years ago, and thank God for that. The Helicoprion was a bizarre species of shark that had one of the craziest sets of teeth in natural history. Its unusual feature of teeth has always been a huge debate in the scientific community, and it's easy to see why. The only fossils that have been found of this animal contain sets of spiral teeth, and scientists are still trying to figure out just how they would possibly fit into to a shark's mouth. What they do know is that, like many modern sharks, the Helicoprion most likely had to replace their teeth pretty often. Many images online show the terrifying shark with a buzzsaw mouth, but some scientists believe that the tooth spiral may have actually been located inside the shark's throat. Gross. I don't care where those teeth are located, all I know is I don't want them anywhere near me. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Cray Fisherman. David Stead is an Australian naturalist, and in his book titled Sharks and Rays of the Australian Seas, he details an encounter with a shark that some have taken to believe is the legendary Megalodon herself. Apparently, this incident happened in 1981 to a group of cray fishermen that David spoke with. These fishermen were absolutely terrified of a shark they saw in their fishing grounds, which were just off of Broughton Island. They were so scared, in fact, that they refused to return to the fishing spot for days. All 
the men agreed that the shark was monstrous and that it was most definitely a shark, not a whale. The men explained that they had never seen a shark of that size before and considering how they were all seasoned fishermen who had all had their fair share of encounters with sharks, whales, and all of the terrifying things that the ocean has to offer, how frightened they were really did leave quite the impression. In our number 8 spot today we have two specimens. This story comes from all the way back in 1869 when an Irish scientist headed out on an expedition to Seychelles. It is said that he went there to study fish, but man he was not prepared for the specimens he would go on to study. It is said that he found one that was over 15 meters, which is already a whopping almost 50 feet, but the other one really took the cake. The second specimen it is said that he found was alleged to have been 23 meters long, which is a massive 75 feet. Since this was so long ago there wasn't any official documentation of it, but if there had been, the second one would hold the record for being the largest ever recorded. That is absolutely wild. Seeing it is one thing, but imagine being able to actually study it. In our number 7 spot today we have the sailors. This gigantic shark sighting is said to have taken place in the 1960s just off of the edge of Australia's Great Barrier Reef. According to author BC Cartmel in his book Let's Go Fossil Shark Tooth Hunting, the sailors and involved in this sighting initially refused to talk about it because of the fear of being teased for being afraid of what they had seen. After some time, however, they began to speak about the incident. They explained that while on board their 85-foot ship, they needed to weigh anchor in order to conduct some engine repairs. While this was ongoing, the crew became absolutely shocked when they saw the biggest shark they had ever seen slowly swimming past their completely stuck ship. Just like the last one, all the men agreed that they were not mistaking a whale and that it was indeed a shark. They also said that this shark was so large it was rivaling the boat in size. That is absolutely massive. Whether it really was a megalodon or not, whatever shark they saw that day certainly wasn't the average size. In our number 6 spot today we have the battle scar. This story is a little different than the others on today's list and it started with the sighting of a great white shark. This 15 foot long shark was spotted swimming just off of Isla Guadalupe in Mexico, but what was so striking about this great white in particular was the absolutely savage wound it had on its side. This huge bite mark had people speculating as to what in the world could have caused it. I mean, there aren't very many predators to great whites, so it's a pretty rare occasion to see such a huge bite mark right on the side of one, and people were doubting whether or not another shark would have done this to one of its own species. There definitely are reasons for why this could have been an attack from another shark, but of course people took this as a possible sign that maybe there's something bigger lurking in the waters. If the megalodon somehow isn't actually extinct and just manages to evade any sort of confirmation of its existence, it certainly would need a ton of food to survive, which makes big fish like great whites a perfect snack. The megalodon is however one of the most powerful predators to have ever lived on our planet, so if this bite really was from a megalodon, it's surprising that this great white made it out alive. In our number 5 spot today we have a world record. Basking sharks are known for being one of the largest fish in the ocean, and that is exactly why the largest one ever recorded was definitely something to write home about. In 1851 in the Bay of Fundy which sits between New Brunswick and Nova Scotia here in Canada, a basking shark was caught in a herring net. This shark was measured to be at least 40 feet long which is astoundingly large and it certainly confused those who had caught it at first. I can imagine that they likely also thought that they had some kind of living fossil caught up in their net, but nope, instead they just set a new world record. In our number 4 spot today we have the demon. There are many stories and alleged sightings of what is now referred to as the quote black demon of Cortez, which is said to be a massive black shark seen off of Mexico's Baja coast. One story in particular regarding this elusive shark comes from a fisherman named Eric Mack. He had reported that one day while sailing he felt his boat begin to rock, which immediately gave him the feeling that something was awry. Eric was even further startled when he explained that he saw a massive towering tail sticking at least 5 feet out of 
of the water. The stories of this shark are so infamous that it was even the focus of an episode of a History Channel show called Monster Quest. Maybe if there's a part 2 of this video we'll talk about some more of the sightings surrounding the demon. In our number 3 spot today we have Deep Blue. This shark is in fact not a megalodon but it definitely is a more modern contender. Deep Blue is the name of a great white shark who is most definitely one of the greatest ever recorded, at least in our lifetime. This colossal monster is the largest great white shark ever caught on camera by scientists. She is measured to be 20 feet long, 8 feet high and about 2.5 tons and while this isn't all that huge compared to her massive prehistoric cousin, it certainly is no small feat. Rumors of her existence have been spread since as far back as the 1990s but it wasn't until 2014 that she was officially caught on camera and documented. Researchers at the time were in the midst of studying tiger sharks but she made her grand appearance after scavenging some food from a sperm whale carcass nearby. In our number 2 spot today we have Bigger Than The Boat. Zane Grey is a man who is a novelist and he is definitely best known for his adventure novels but it is also said that he was a deep sea angler and it was during one of his fishing adventures that his megalodon sighting came. In the novel which is titled Megalodon Fact or Fiction, writer Rick Emmer speaks of this incident saying that Zane claimed to have seen quote one of the man eating monsters of the south pacific. It is said that whatever kind of shark he saw, it was a shark that was much longer than his boat which was somewhere from 30 to 40 feet. He also said that this shark was yellow and green and that it had a few white spots. Most notably however, he said that the shark had a massive square head and that it had quote immense pectoral fins. This is all to say that whether he saw a megalodon or not, whatever he saw was not just a harmless great white shark. What do you guys think? Perhaps a megalodon sighting or just one of the tall exciting tales told by Mr. Grey. In our number 1 spot today we have the Mariana Trench sighting. A few years ago a video began circulating the internet and it shows a gigantic shark scouring the sea floor. People online quickly put a story to the video saying that allegedly this is a megalodon that was caught on camera at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. The creature is seen swimming over top of what is apparently an abandoned shark cage and the video seems to be enough to have convinced many, many people. The video certainly is compelling and whatever we see is most definitely terrifying to look at, but with my very limited knowledge of anything that lives in the sea, it's tough to say anything further. While some people swear that this is solid proof, others have brought up sharks that may have a similar appearance to the one seen in the video. Starting off in our number 10 spot we have the TikTok shark. In May of last year, someone on TikTok called Alex Albrecht, who is a marine biodiversity student as well as a musician, shared a video on the app that had people seriously shocked. The TikTok shows a massive shark lurking around the ship that Alex was on, which is said to have just been off of the coast of Massachusetts at the time. The ship was full of research students when this massive shark made its appearance, many of which either screamed or had some sort of expletive to say in response. Another TikTok user asked in the comments if the shark in the video is a megalodon considering how absolutely huge this thing was. Was this an actual megalodon? Likely not, but hey, I'm not the marine life student here so who am I to say? At number 9 we have the deep sea dragonfish. Any fish with the name dragon in it is sure to be a sight for sore eyes, literally. This fish has humongous teeth, a pretty ugly face, hashtag sorry not sorry, and is known to be a deep underwater assassin. These fish are 6 inches or 15 centimeters long and live at the depths of 6 to 7,000 feet. Like many of these deep water creatures, the dragonfish also has the highly sought after bioluminescent feature. Beneath its chin dangles a lighted barbell that is used to communicate with other fish as well as is used for camouflage when need be. Other fish mistaken the light bulb for another smaller fish or even prey of its own, only to be surprised that itself is the prey and that it's way too late. Chomp! Some dragonfish even have gained the ability to glow red. Some believe that the red glow is used to signal its deep water brethren, while others believe it to be a signal of the dragonfish about to pounce. Either way, a glowing red fish sounds terrifying to me, no matter how big or small, so I'ma stay in the shallow end. At number 8, we have the deep sea hatchetfish. Why is it called a hatchetfish? Well, imagine if that hatchet in your garage had 
had fins, eyes, gills, and could swim freely around the ocean, then it would pretty much look like this guy. Or one of these guys because believe it or not, there are over 40 different species of hatchet fish out there and I'm sure there is more somewhere. These fish are the same size as the dragonfish so they aren't that big, but they can be found at depths of 5,000 feet. Be careful though, these guys are also sneaky because they have that highly sought after bioluminescent feature and can camouflage themselves from predators quite easily as well. I mean, we won't see them often because of the depths that they live at, but that's okay, I'm not complaining. I like seeing the hatchet stay where it belongs, in my garage, safely kept away from the water and only taken out when having backyard campfires. And man oh man does that sound good right now. Coming in at number 7 we have comb jellies. They have a much more scientific name, but I think comb jellies is much more fun and if you really care about the scientific name, I'll let you take a stab at it on your own. Anyway, these crazy light up alien like fish can come in sizes from a few inches all the way up to 5 feet. Luckily like their other jelly man cousin, the actual jellyfish, these guys don't have any stingers. But they will attack their own sometimes, so watch out for those underwater MMA matches between these guys. They swim through the ocean by swaying their comb teeth like tentacles on the side of their body and they are another sight for sore eyes, really. Just recently, the New York Times found a new way to continue researching these creatures by taking samples of their DNA from a process that is called environmental DNA sampling, where scientists collect snippets of DNA from fallen hair, skin, and mucus that the creatures shed into their environment underwater. It is said that the 200 known species could rise to 6 to almost 800 using this new system. I kind of would love some more, but can't deny that these creatures look totally out of this world, so props to the jellymans. At number 6 we have the sea devil anglerfish. So if a fish has the name dragon or devil in its name, you know it's one to probably look out for. Found deep in the Mariana Trench, probably from swimming up from hell, is the sea devil anglerfish. It has a crazy misshapen body, sorry to body shame, the razor like teeth and fins, and teeth and eyes that can disappear just like that. Yeah, sounds like some demonic powers to me. Likely for everyone on the planet, these fish aren't that big. Females are larger and the biggest they can grow to be is 8 inches long, while males are only about 2 inches. It also has a bioluminescent bulb on top of its head that lures in prey before it even has a second to swim away. Now does this sound familiar? Yeah, it should, because if you ever watched Finding Nemo, then this is the fish that Marlin and Dory almost got eaten by. So if you happen to be a superhuman and can swim at great depths to see these scary fish, in the words of Dory, just keep swimming. Coming in at our halfway point at number 5 we have the frilled shark. Remember the puffy shirt from Seinfeld with all of the frills? Well Jerry looked pretty terrible in it and this shark looks terrifying in it. Well with them not in it because let's face it the shark isn't wearing a shirt but either way I'm sure it could still make the shirt look cooler than Jerry Seinfeld. Anyway this shark has the body of an eel with the head of probably one of the scariest creatures on earth. It has 6 frilly gills on the side of its head to no one's surprise and can measure up to 6 feet in length. That's longer than me. It also has 20 rows of razor sharp trident shaped teeth that will tear right through any flesh it can sink its teeth into. They usually live in waters around 4,000 feet deep and the odd time humans catch one and bring them to the surface, but please don't do this. One, because don't go near these crazy things, and two, because these creatures can't handle life above as they are used to the great underwater pressure. Any brought to the surface will almost die immediately. So remember, frilled sharks are friends, not food. Okay, 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 we have had dragon and demon in the names of some of our underwater creatures today. Can you guess one more that we might have enough said? No? Well, how about goblin? That's right, coming in at number 4 we have the frilled shark's trusty companion, the goblin shark. If you get one look at these things, you will understand exactly why these things are called goblin sharks. They have a large protruding snout, then underneath that is a protruding jaw of razor sharp teeth. Honestly, once again, to put it simply, these guys are just straight up ugly and scary. They also aren't the normal grey colour that most sharks are. They are instead coloured with a pinkish hue. In case these guys aren't scary enough, you will be happy to know that these things grow to be 18 feet in length. But you probably won't ever see one as they live at depths of 3,000 feet and go deeper the older they get. Other than that, there is not much known about these creatures because of how deep they live, but also because of how freaking scary they are. Yeah, Dewey ain't going anywhere near that thing. Starting us off in our top 3, at number 3 is the Dumbo Octopus. I know, I know, the thing doesn't sound or seem that scary. After all, it's named after a freaking Disney cartoon, I get it. But these crazy looking things are known to eat its prey. Whole. They only grow to be about a foot in length, but if they can swallow its prey whole, I don't want to imagine how big its prey can be. Because maybe they even eat like snakes, who knows? Anyway, these guys live at depths of 9800 to 13,000 feet and are actually the deepest dwelling octopus known to science. That's pretty cool. So while these guys actually look kind of cute, I'm sure they are quite the scare for some deep water fish, as well as who knows if they evolved to have larger cousins at the very bottom of the sea. Who knows? Yeah, I don't. At our number 2 spot we have the cousin of Dumbo, the telescope octopus. These things are so weird and also have 
have a completely transparent body. Well, almost, so I guess that makes it more translucent, but I don't know. Anyway, these weird looking octopi live at depths of 6,500 feet and they don't swim horizontally either. They actually just float vertically, making it harder for deep sea predators to spot it. It also has webbing between its tentacles, giving it a ghostly like shape. And one last thing that makes it kind of creepy is that these creatures have wicked eyes. In its head are two protruding eyeballs that can fully rotate and keep an eye out for its deep water predators. What kind of predators? Well, let's check out our number one spot. And finally, coming in at number one spot is sea monsters. Ah! Okay. Have sea monsters actually been found in the deep waters of the Marianas Trench? No. But could there be? Absolutely. I know I have gone on and on about how little our oceans have been explored, but one of those specific places in our oceans is the Marianas Trench. It is so deep that no human on Earth can reach its depths fully, and even if they did, they would need an incredibly powerful pressurized submarine. So who the heck knows what else is swimming around at the bottom of our oceans? I mean, they said the giant squid was a legend and it turned out to be real, so anything goes, really. Let's just hope we find footage of a monster first and not find out the hard way, you know, by <laughs> being lunch. Starting us off at number 10 is the barrel eye fish. Now this fish isn't that creepy looking, I will admit, but it is a little gross and futuristic looking. Why? Because you can see directly inside its head. Since the Mariana Trench is so deep and dark, how the heck is a fish going to see where it's going or what's around them? Answer, they're going to make their own light. The barrel eye fish has a transparent head with two barrel like eyes inside of its head that face upwards. This lets the fish see the silhouettes of its prey. How convenient. Scientists believe that its transparent head allows for the barrel eye fish to collect just a bit more light, which gives this fish just a bit more of an advantage over its deep water competition. The barrel eye fish wasn't even known to humans until 1939, when one was pulled from its underwater home at 2,500 feet below the surface. Although they can't survive past a certain point, as they are too used to the deep underwater pressure. Luckily, scientists now have high-tech underwater rovers that they can use to go learn more about the reproduction and life cycles of these strange fish. In our number nine spot today, we have Todd Endress. Todd Endress is actually a man who was attacked by the same shark three different times on August 28th, 2007. Todd was near Marina State Park in California when the attacks occurred. The first one didn't do too much damage, but the second one was certainly much worse. He would later go on to say, spoiler alert, he survived these attacks. He would later go on to say that during this second attack, the shark skinned his back, quote, like a banana peel. Okay, Mario Kart just turned into Nightmare on Elm Street. With the third attack, the shark attempted to eat his leg, which was still attached to his body, and this is when his kind of unlikely savior came in. It was actually a group of dolphins that decided to surround Todd, which provided enough of a distraction that he was able to ride a wave back to shore. It is definitely possible that the shark could have, and it may have, eaten one of those rescue dolphins should it choose to. Once Todd was back on shore, despite having lost half of his blood, his friends were able to help him until rescue arrived, and from there, just six weeks later, he was back in the water. Sadly, Todd ended up losing his life in September of 2016 from a car crash but it's important to note that after his attack, before his untimely death, he made it clear he held no grudge against his shark attacker. He said, quote, We're in his realm, not the other way around. In our number 8 spot today, we have the J-Bay Event Finals. This shark attack is from 2015 and is one that happened on live TV, but thankfully it turned out much better than it could have. During the finals of the J-Bay Event, which again was being broadcast live around the world, a shark got himself a little in over his head when he decided to try and take a bite out of three-time world surfing champion Mick Fanning. Mick reacted a lot more bravely than I would have and started to fight back against the shark. While this was going on, another pro surfer, Julian Wilson, paddled towards the shark in order to try and help. In the end, the safety teams came out as quickly as possible to rescue the surfers and a photographer who was also out on the water, and everyone was fine, albeit probably a little shaken up. Fights broke out on the internet over whether this was a shark attack or a shark encounter, and and I mean, all that really matters is the humans and the shark are all safe at the end of the day. In our number seven spot today, we have this strange environment. This is a shark encounter that, I'll be honest, it isn't a megalodon, but it is one that is so strange, it might just show that maybe we don't really have all the answers to ocean mysteries. Scientists were really surprised and confused when they found hammerhead and silky sharks swimming near an underwater volcano in the South Pacific. This is because the waters around there would be extremely hot and they would also be really acidic. This is an extreme environment for marine life, and while some species would thrive in this environment, sharks aren't really on that list, hence the confusion and bafflement of the scientists. While this isn't a confirmed megalodon sighting, it is just something that shows us that life under the sea is mysterious and new secrets are revealed to us every day. In our number six spot today, we have Watson and the shark. For this one, we are headed all the way back to 1749 with a cabin boy named Brooke Watson. Brooke was swimming in the Havana 
harbor when he had his encounter with a shark. This one grabbed him by his right foot and dragged him under. The shark got a second chomp on his foot before a rescue boat was able to come and save him. The sailor on the boat managed to get the shark to back off enough that they could get Brooke out of the water. Brooke lost his lower leg, but his life was saved, which is absolutely the most important part. Brooke's story is not over, however, as he went on to become a member of parliament and eventually Lord Mayor of England. He was so proud of himself for not only having survived a shark attack, but then going on to earn this title that he commissioned famous artist John Singleton Copley to create a painting called Watson and the Shark, which detailed his horrifying encounter and probably went on to scare a ton of people at the time. In our number five spot today, we have Instagram famous. John Braxton is a man who Instagram is definitely not very happy at, and if his video came up in your feed unsuspectingly, you might also have some words for the guy. John was 27 years old at the time of his shark encounter, and he was spearfishing at the time. During his time fishing, he had an encounter with a huge shark that ended up taking a massive bite right out of his leg. John was thankfully able to escape the shark and swim to shore where his partner tied a tourniquet and called 911. When the ambulance arrived, John was likely in shock. I mean, I would be if I even saw a shark beside me, let alone if one bit me. So in this altered state, John took his phone out and started recording a video where he panned down to his terribly injured leg. He of course posted the video to Instagram, who later removed it, but of course not before the entire computer and phone having population got a chance to save it and reshare it at any chance possible. In our number four spot today, we have Breach. This is a shark encounter that truthfully, I have very little background info on, but the video really speaks for itself. This shark video was recorded in Mossel Bay and it shows this gigantic shark basically leaping out of the ocean. I mean, come on, imagine. That would be absolutely terrifying. People who are more well-versed in shark behavior than I am have explained that this shark, despite how it looks, is actually not doing this to be threatening, and it's not a move that would be done should it be attempting to attack something. I mean, that's not entirely true. It's actually more so used in order to try and catch fast-moving prey like seals. It's relatively rare to capture a shark doing this, though, because it takes so much energy for it to propel itself like this. I mean, they can reach 40 miles per hour and fly 10 feet into the air out of the water. That takes some serious strength. In our number three spot today, we have Ahmad Hassim. Back in 2006, Ahmad and his brother were assisting lifeguards in Cape Town, South Africa, and to do this, they were helping out running different survival drills. During this one particular drill, the brother was lying in the water, pretending to be someone who needed help, and that is when a huge shark could be seen heading towards this brother that was completely unaware. Ahmad saw this and was so quick thinking, he knew that sharks are typically attracted to sound, which, I actually didn't know, so there's a little shark trivia fact for you. So because he knew this, he started splashing around in the water. This worked, and it led to the shark leaving his brother alone, but instead, the shark now set his sights on Akhmat. It ended up grabbing him by his right leg and pulling him underwater. He was able to use his left leg to kick at the shark until it let go of him, but the shark was still able to get away with his leg below the knee. A boat was able to rush him to shore, and help arrived quickly enough to rush him to the hospital and save his life. Akhmat has not let this slow him down in the slightest, though. He has gone on to reach not only the 2008 Beijing Paralympic Games, but he won gold at the 2012 London Paralympic Games, which is absolutely incredible. He has also gone on to become a shark advocate, saying that he has, quote, a sense that sharks are in trouble, and who better to speak up for sharks than a shark attack survivor? In our number two spot today, we have Rodney Fox. Rodney Fox is a man who was thought of as one of the best spear fishermen in the world. In 1963, he was partaking in the Australian Australian Spearfishing Championships, which were being held just south of Adelaide, when he went through what is widely regarded as one of the worst shark attacks in history. The shark he encountered bit him around the waist, which ended up puncturing his diaphragm, ripping his lungs, and crushing his rib cage. Not only this, but the attack left his organs exposed, so much so that when he finally made it back to shore, those rescuing him had to keep his wetsuit on to ensure that his insides actually stayed on the inside. Despite the fact that Rodney needed at least four hours of surgery and about 400 stitches. Like many people who have these sorts of terrifying encounters, rather than shying away from sharks and the water, he leaned in. He actually became an advocate for sharks after this. He created the first underwater shark observatory and helped to dispel the rumors that sharks are bad, crazy, scary animals that we should all fear. In our number one spot today, we have Michael Coots. Back in 1997, Michael was surfing near the coast of Hawaii when he had his shark encounter. The shark decided to attack and grabbed Michael by both of his legs. 
lives. Michael has gone on to explain that once the shark had a hold on him, it began swinging him back and forth like a dog would do with a toy. That is absolutely so vivid and so horrifying to even think about. Michael was able to punch the shark into letting go of him and was able to escape to safety after the scary ordeal. Although he was lucky and happy to be alive, the shark had done enough damage that Michael ended up losing his right leg. Despite this setback, Michael was back in the water just three weeks later already using his prosthetic leg and getting used to surfing with it so he could get right back to what he loves. Michael could be terrified of sharks now and no one would blame him, but it's the exact opposite. He swam around them and even taken selfies with them since and has explained how much he respects them saying quote sharks are not to be feared but are incredibly beautiful and extremely important species for the health of our oceans starting off in our number 10 spot we have the Zuyo Maru monster this story is one that comes to us from 1977 and rather than an alive animal sighting this one is actually this carcass that was found that we still aren't quite sure what it belongs to. The Zoyumaru carcass was one that was found by Japanese fishermen near New Zealand. Because it was so unique, it was taken to be analyzed, and while many have speculated that it was a basking shark, that has never been confirmed or proven. Considering the fact that it was definitely shark-like, but just not quite clear as to what exactly it was, is definitely interesting. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Cray Fisherman. David Stead is an Australian naturalist, and in his book titled Sharks and Rays of the Australian Seas, he details an encounter with a shark that some have taken to believe is the legendary Megalodon herself. Apparently, this incident happened in 1981 to a group of cray fishermen that David spoke with. These fishermen were absolutely terrified of a shark they saw in their fishing grounds, which were just off of Broughton Island. They were so scared, in fact, that they refused to return to the fishing spot for days. All the men agreed that the shark was monstrous and that it was most definitely a shark, not a whale. The men explained that they had never seen a shark of that size before and considering how they were all seasoned fishermen who had all had their fair share of encounters with sharks, whales, and all of the terrifying things that the ocean has to offer, how frightened they were really did leave quite the impression. In our number 8 spot today we have two specimens. This story comes from all the way back in 1869 when an Irish scientist headed out on an expedition to Seychelles. It is said that he went there to study fish, but man, he was not prepared for the specimens he would go on to study. It is said that he found one that was over 15 meters, which is already a whopping almost 50 feet, but the other one really took the cake. The second specimen it is said that he found was alleged to have been 23 meters long, which is a massive 75 feet. Since this was so long ago, there wasn't any official documentation of it, but if there had been, the second one would hold the record for being the largest ever recorded. That is absolutely wild. Seeing it is one thing, but imagine being able to actually study it. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Sailors. This gigantic shark sighting is said to have taken place in the 1960s, just off of the edge of Australia's Great Barrier Reef. According to author B.C. Cartmel in his book, Let's Go Fossil Shark Tooth Hunting, the Sailors and involved in this sighting initially refused to talk about it because of the fear of being teased for being afraid of what they had seen. After some time, however, they began to speak about the incident. They explained that while on board their 85-foot ship, they needed to weigh anchor in order to conduct some engine repairs. While this was ongoing, the crew became absolutely shocked when they saw the biggest shark they had ever seen slowly swimming past their completely stuck ship. Just like the last one, all the men agreed that they were not mistaking a whale and that it was indeed a shark. They also said that this shark was so large it was rivaling the boat in size. That is absolutely massive. Whether it really was a megalodon or not, whatever shark they saw that day certainly wasn't the average size. In our number 6 spot today we have the Battle Scar. This story is a little different than the others on today's list and it started with the sighting of a great white shark. This 15 foot long shark was spotted swimming just off of Isla Guadalupe in Mexico, but what was so striking about this great white in particular was the absolutely savage wound it had on its side. This huge bite mark 
Network had people speculating as to what in the world could have caused it. I mean, there aren't very many predators to great whites, so it's a pretty rare occasion to see such a huge bite mark right on the side of one, and people were doubting whether or not another shark would have done this to one of its own species. There definitely are reasons for why this could have been an attack from another shark, but of course people took this as a possible sign that maybe there's something bigger lurking in the waters. If the Megalodon somehow isn't actually extinct and just manages to evade any sort of confirmation of its existence, it certainly would need a ton of food to survive, which makes big fish like great whites a perfect snack. The Megalodon is however one of the most powerful predators to have ever lived on our planet, so if this bite really was from a Megalodon, it's surprising that this great white made it out alive. In our number 5 spot today we have a world record. Basking sharks are known for being one of the largest fish in the ocean, and that is exactly why the largest one ever recorded was definitely something to write home about. In 1851, in the Bay of Fundy, which sits between New Brunswick and Nova Scotia here in Canada, a basking shark was caught in a herring net. This shark was measured to be at least 40 feet long, which is astoundingly large, and it certainly confused those who had caught it at first. I can imagine that they likely also thought that they had some kind of living fossil caught up in their net, but nope, instead they just set a new world record. In our number 4 spot today we have the demon. There are many stories and alleged sightings of what is now referred to as the quote black demon of Cortez, which is said to be a massive black shark seen off of Mexico's Baja coast. One story in particular regarding this elusive shark comes from a fisherman named Eric Mack. He had reported that one day while sailing he felt his boat begin to rock, which immediately gave him the feeling that something was awry. Eric was even further startled when he explained that he saw a massive towering tail sticking at least 5 feet out of the water. The stories of this shark are so infamous that it was even the focus of an episode of a history channel show called Monster Quest. Maybe if there's a part 2 of this video we'll talk about some more of the sightings surrounding the demon. In our number 3 spot today we have Deep Blue. This shark is in fact not a megalodon, but it definitely is a more modern contender. Deep Blue is the name of a great white shark who is most definitely one of the greatest ever recorded, at least in our lifetime. This colossal monster is the largest great white shark ever caught on camera by scientists. She is measured to be 20 feet long, 8 feet high, and about 2.5 tons, and while this isn't all that huge compared to her massive prehistoric cousin, it certainly is no small feat. Rumors of her existence have been spread since as far back as the 1990s, but it wasn't until 2014 that she was officially caught on camera and documented. Researchers at the time were in the midst of studying tiger sharks, but she made her grand appearance after scavenging some food from a sperm whale carcass nearby. In our number 2 spot today we have Bigger Than The Boat. Zane Grey is a man who is a novelist and he is definitely best known for his adventure novels, but it is also said that he was a deep sea angler, and it was during one of his fishing adventures that his Megalodon sighting came. In the novel, which is titled Megalodon, Fact or Fiction, writer Rick Emmer speaks of this incident, saying that Zane claimed to have seen, quote, one of the man-eating monsters of the South Pacific. It is said that whatever kind of shark he saw, it was a shark that was much longer than his boat, which was somewhere from 30 to 40 feet. He also said that this shark was yellow and green, and that it had a few white spots. Most notably, however, he said that the shark had a massive square head, and that it had quote, immense pectoral fins. This is all to say that whether he saw a megalodon or not, whatever he saw was not just a harmless great white shark. What do you guys think? Perhaps a megalodon sighting, or just one of the tall, exciting tales told by Mr. Gray. In our number one spot today, we have the Mariana Trench sighting. A few years ago, a video began circulating the internet, and it shows a gigantic shark scouring the seafloor. People online quickly put a story to the video, saying that allegedly this is a megalodon that was caught on camera at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. The creature is seen swimming over top of what is apparently an abandoned shark cage, and the video seems to be enough to have convinced convinced many, many people. The video certainly is compelling, and whatever we see is most definitely terrifying to look at, but with my very limited knowledge of 
anything that lives in the sea, it's tough to say anything further. While some people swear that this is solid proof, others have brought up sharks that may have a similar appearance to the one seen in the video. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the photographer. This is an encounter that occurred just last year in November. Underwater photographer Darren Verbeck was diving off of the coast of Hawaii's Big Island when he saw what he thought was a school of fish. He began to get closer, I mean the whole photographer thing, and as he got closer he started to think that what he was actually seeing was a tiger shark. He continued to get closer and that's when he said quote, I just kept looking at the head. I'm like, that is not a tiger shark. And it got closer and closer and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Darren continued to get closer to the shark and estimated it to be over 15 feet, which is definitely quite large. He explained that the shark was not acting in a threatening way, so he continued to take his photos and shot as much as he could before the massive shark decided to swim away. Experts explained that the shark was likely in the area because of humpback whales, and honestly, I do not want to see the shark that could take down one of those beasts. Coming at number 9 now is the Mosasaurus. Honey, if you thought the Megalodon was big, you ain't seen nothing yet. The Mosasaurus was a prehistoric marine reptile that grew up to 60 feet in length. Now, the max possible length of a meg was 60 feet, but that was the biggest of the big. Most Mosasaurs reach at least 55 to 56 feet, so both are pretty much the same size too. It existed during the late Cretaceous period nearly 70 to 66 million years ago. The name itself means lizard of the Meuse River, and it was dubbed as one of the most dangerous animals in the water during the Cretaceous period. Like these things did not come to mess around. They lived near the ocean surface and ate mostly fish, turtles, and other smaller mosasaurs, and they didn't like to dive too deep into the water. The mosasaurus itself looks sort of like a gigantic emphasis on gigantic crocodile that just had fins. If you want a good indication of what this creature looked like, you can see it very clearly in Jurassic World in the scene where the people are watching the water and the mosasaurus leaps out and eats a great white shark. And that was probably just a light snack before lunch. At number 8 we have the Jacolopterus. What's worse than a scorpion? A sea scorpion that's bigger than you. This creature was known to be a predator nearly 400 million years ago and was probably willing to eat anything small smaller than itself. Rumor has it that included members of its own species. This creepy collar grew to over 8 feet long. I'm 5'7", so let's put that into perspective. Anthropod is a group of species that includes insects, lobsters, and crabs. This guy is the largest discovered species of the whole group. They also had a huge spiked claws that could kill a fish with ease. Experts believe that they would ambush their prey with their claws before tearing their meal apart. There's an image I didn't need in my head. Filling our number 7 slot is the Quetzalcoatl Atlas. Yeah, don't worry, even when I saw that word, I was like, how on earth do you say that? But anyway, this beast was a pterosaur from the late Cretaceous period and is one of the largest known flying animals of our world. That's a heavy title to carry. Think of this creature as a pterodactyl on steroids. Their wingspan was known to reach anywhere between 40 to 52 feet wide, and its minimum wingspan was 36 feet. The Quetzalcoatl Atlas also had a very long, sharp pointed beak and they would mostly eat like any modern day skimmer. Even though at their size they could probably kill anything that may have been roaming around with them at the time, so let's just be real. They'd catch a lot of fish during flight while skimming the waves and they didn't actually have any teeth, which is good for us. However, other people speculate they didn't skim at all and in fact ate like scavengers. There's not a significant amount known on the species, but one thing's for sure. If that thing is 15 times bigger than I am, you can bet your ass you won't find me anywhere near it. Now at number 6 is Titanoboa. If the movie Anaconda scared you, you might want to skip this one. As simple as it gets, Titanoboa is the largest snake that ever existed. I am speaking in past tense because yes they are extinct and yes I am happy about it. This massive snake grew to more than 40 feet long and could weigh up to 2,500 pounds. To help put things in perspective, that's almost as much as a grown giraffe weighs. Huge. Similar to the anaconda, they can fit their entire prey in their mouth with just one swallow. And I'm not talking about little mice, I'm talking deers, jaguars, and yes, even humans. Apparently this terrifying creature appeared not long after the dinosaurs went extinct. I guess the world needed a new top predator. I think I'd actually prefer having a dinosaur around. 
Coming at number 5 is the Liopleurodon. Now this creature is another carnivorous marine reptile and it is a type of plesiosaur. The name Liopleurodon itself means smooth sided teeth. They lived during the Colovian stage of the middle jurassic period and they were literally the apex predator in the sea near Europe at that time. The largest one ever recorded was a bit over 33 feet long whereas the average size of them is somewhere between 16 to 23 feet. They also weighed a ton, I'm talking 2000 to 4000 pounds. Their teeth were around 7 centimeters long and the animal itself was mainly found near England and France. The beast had 4 strong paddle like limbs which made it very good at accelerating especially after whatever prey it wanted. If something that big and that fast came after me in the water I would just let it take me honestly. There would be no point in even me attempting to swim away. The Liopleurodon would probably laugh at me in that scenario like I myself would be a joke. At number 4 is Megatherium. When we think of sloths we probably think of cute cuddly animals that sleep all day and mind their own business. A sloth isn't exactly the first thing that comes to mind when I think of deadly monsters. But the Megatherium was more like a modern sloth in giant size. Not only was it giant but it was also known to be angry. It behaved like a sloth, sort of looked like a bear and was about the size of an elephant. And no I'm not exaggerating, it was huge. Unlike an elephant though, this giant sloth also had giant claws and could stand on its hind legs to appear even bigger to other animals. This is one sloth that I have no interest in petting and turns out I wouldn't be able to anyways because they were extinct over 10,000 years ago. Filling our number 3 slot is the Thalatoarchin. Now this was a type of ichthyosaur and it was alive near western America during the middle triassic era and it was known to be the oldest known marine reptile that was also an apex predator. I feel like I'm saying this about every animal. Funnily enough we have all our information about this creature from one single holotype the FMNH PR3032 that was found in 2010. So this is a pretty recent discovery, go science. The total length of a Thalatoarchin is around 20 28 to 30 feet, and it was actually one of the first marine predators that was able to eat prey as big as itself. Their teeth had two edges that could both cut through prey, so either way, whatever it's eating is getting torn to shreds big time. I wish I could say more about how it lived and how it ate, but not enough is known about the animal for me to do so. I mean, it was only formally described in 2013, so give me five years and I'll come back to this one, I promise. Now, at number two is the Scolopendra gigantea, also known as my biggest fear. If you are deathly afraid of centipedes like me then this one will make you cringe. It's the largest centipede in the world, growing to a whopping 26 centimeters, also known as 10 inches. They've been found in the central part of South America. Super thankful right now that I live in Canada. Not only is it huge, long and creepy but to top it all off it has modified jaws on its head which can trap and deliver venom to its prey. Its usual prey is mice, lizards and frogs but if you happen to get bit by one of them, it can cause severe swelling and fever. Their venom is toxic to humans. The fact that this one isn't extinct is a complete nightmare for me. And finally, at number one is the Liviatan. Now this big boy is actually an extinct genus of sperm whales and it got its name from the sea monster Leviathan. Go figure. It was mostly found near Peru and South America and it was around during the Tortonian stage of the Miocene epoch which is around 9 to 8 million years ago. It was a hyper predatory sperm whale and it was low key, actually no not even low key, it was a high key and apex predator. It grew to around 44 to 57 feet long, again nearly the size of a megalodon and the tallest tooth ever recorded from one was more than 14 inches big. That is the largest tooth ever recorded of any known animal. Its teeth were very deeply embedded into its gums and they also interlocked which helped them hold struggling prey, like they need any more advantages. According to Discover Magazine, Magazine, this creature lived during the same time as the megalodon and it actually ate other whales that were 20 to 40 feet big and competed with the meg for similar prey. If you can't find something scarier than the meg, then find something just as scary. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the TikTok shark. In May of last year, someone on TikTok called Alex Albrecht, who is a marine biodiversity student as well as a musician, shared a video on the app that had people seriously shocked. The TikTok shows a massive shark lurking around the ship that Alex was on, which is said to have just been off of the coast of Massachusetts at the time. The ship was full of research students when this massive shark made its appearance, many of which
witch either screamed or had some sort of expletive to say in response. Another TikTok user asked in the comments if the shark in the video is a megalodon considering how absolutely huge this thing was. Was this an actual megalodon? Likely not, but hey, I'm not the marine life student here so who am I to say? In our number 9 spot today we have the sea creature. Back in both 1817 as well as 1819 there was a sea creature that visited the coast of Massachusetts and it was seen by hundreds of people but no one has been able to identify what it could have been for sure. The creature was said to be around 3 feet in diameter and around 50 feet long and it is said that it moved similarly to how a whale or a dolphin might. The first sighting of this creature was when some fishermen spotted it but the real panic began as the creature started to show itself closer to to shore. To this day, some people swear that this was some sort of real sea monster and others believe it was just a case of mass hysteria. What do you think? In our number 8 spot today we have the prehistoric monster. Back in 1959, a fisherman named Tex Geds and his friend James Gavin were boating somewhere just off of the coast of Scotland. It is said that during their time out to sea they encountered a sea monster that neither of them had seen before. They described its head as being sort of turtle shaped and that it was a quote hellish monster of prehistoric times and said that it was breathing heavily through a quote large red gash of a mouth. Okay, not exactly a kind description but definitely a bit of a terrifying one. I think it's important to bring up that we don't actually know what megalodons look like. We have a sort of idea but at the end of the day we only have fossils, jaws and spines and that doesn't leave us that much to work with. While it isn't quite clear what these two men saw for sure and it's likely that we'll never know, whatever it was definitely wasn't just your average sea creature. In our number 7 spot today we have Dr. Gru. When we think of the tales of sea monsters and myths, we often think of the many serpent like creatures that just may be lurking underneath the water. This is definitely a common theme and in the 17th century there was a botanist who came up with a sort of explanation for these sea serpent sightings. It's important to note that this botanist was a very legitimate scientist who really worked to change basically everything we knew about plant anatomy, so when he came forth with this evidence and explanation it rightfully caught people's attention. Basically, he had this specimen, which was a sample of skin that he said was from some sort of seal, but that it had a neck just as long as the rest of its body. Of course, this would explain a whole bunch of sea monster sightings, but in the end, the skin sample ended up completely disappearing, making any confirmation of the story or the animal's existence completely impossible. I know a megalodon isn't necessarily supposed to look like a seal with a long neck, but who's to say for sure that it doesn't? In our number 6 spot today, we have the shipwreck. Back in 1909, the French steamer La Seine was out to sea when it collided with the British India steamer, the Onda. A shipwreck is never good, but this one was particularly bad as, in heavy fog, the French ship sank in just two minutes. This of course left people stranded in the water and I mean, you can probably see where this is going. In the aftermath of this wreck while waiting for the rescue, there were 101 people who lost their lives from shark attacks. That's a lot of people. That is either a lot of sharks or a very few large ones. I mean, none of us were there, so it's hard to say for sure, but whatever really happened here, it's an absolutely horrifying tragedy. In our number 5 spot today, we have the kayak encounter. Ida Parker and Kristen Orr were kayaking off of the coast of Plymouth in 2014 when they encountered a shark. This is truly a nightmare scenario, and it must have been absolutely terrifying. The pair, however, had actually set off with the intention of seeing a great white shark, and while it's likely that this is exactly what they encountered, they definitely did not expect what happened next. The two had heard of rumblings of a shark in the area that had swallowed a seal in one gulp, and this is what sparked their desire to head out on this journey. While out there, however, the shark began to attack their kayaks. In the end, both of them made it out alive, and when their kayaks were recovered, one was found with a huge bite mark in it. In our number 4 spot today, we have the oldest shark attack. Considering the fact that the megalodon is said to have been extinct somewhere over 2 million years Years ago, even evidence that seems ancient to us is a lot more recent than what our current understanding of their timeline here on Earth would suggest. That is exactly why the discovery of what is speculated to be the world's oldest evidence of a shark attack is very interesting. This discovery came by way of a 3,000 year old human skeleton that is marked with different gashes and puncture wounds. It is said that because of the volume of wounds, it makes it slightly easier to tell the story of what happened. This is because while researchers first believed that perhaps 
perhaps the wounds were caused by metal weapons, this could not explain why there were so many in certain parts of the body. Another telltale sign is how this skeleton was discovered in Japan, which at the time of this person's life, there weren't really any metal weapons at that point in history in Japan, which ruled out this theory entirely. They were also able to rule out other terrestrial carnivores, and that's when they turned to marine life to look for some more answers. Because of the time it's been, we obviously don't know what creature was involved in this attack for sure, but with the mass amount of wounds found on the skeleton, it was likely to be something large and terrifying. In our number three spot today, we have snorkeling. Robert Pamperin and a friend, Gerald Lair, were snorkeling off of La Jolla Cave in California in 1959 when Robert was attacked by a shark. It is said to have all happened quite quickly, and Gerald was alerted to the distress when he heard Robert scream. Gerald turned and saw Robert unusually high in the water, and his mask was missing. At this point, Gerald dove under, and this is when he realized exactly what was going on. There was a shark that had Robert in its mouth up to his waist. Unfortunately, there was not much Gerald could do to stand up to this absolutely massive shark that he described as larger than your average great white. Robert sadly did not survive the event, and by the time rescuers arrived, they were only able to locate one of his fins. In our number two spot today, we have the Jersey Shore. Back in 1916, during the summer season, there were five different shark attacks that occurred over the span of 10 days that ended up in the deaths of four people. This wasn't something that had been seen before in the area, which of course left people speculating as to why. There was a heat wave in the area during the time, which likely led to more people being out, enjoying summertime sort of activities, and maybe this attracted the shark, but in the end, no one knows for sure, because no one even knows what kind of shark is responsible for the attacks in the first place. Luckily, this didn't go on to become a continuous trend, and whatever shark this was went on its merry way, or perhaps found another food source, or whatever, but this series of attacks definitely kept the public on edge for the weeks and months surrounding. In our number one spot today, we have the USS Indianapolis. This is a story that has been considered the worst shark attack in history, which is definitely a horrific thing to think about. In 1945, the USS Indianapolis was an unescorted US warship that was sailing in the Pacific when it was struck by a Japanese torpedo. This had no problem tearing the ship in two, which meant that 900 sailors were now floating in the ocean, waiting for rescue. Over the next five days, nearly 600 men lost their lives due to shark attacks. I said this about the other one that was similar to this, and I'll say it again. That's either a group of sharks, or a very few large, very hungry ones. From the survivors' accounts of what happened over the course of those days, it seemed like an absolutely nightmare situation. This is exactly why this has gone on to be called one of the worst shark attacks in history. 